Shinra has my daughter now. I'm sorry. No, I'm the one who asked her to go get Marlene. We'd only just met, but she was so kind and helpful. Let's see what's on the other side. This was not something I have ever expected to see in the remake, us returning to Sector 7 after it had been destroyed. Now in the original game, when Sector 7 was destroyed, the destruction was total. There was nothing left. The entire plate came down and just sandwiched the entire thing. So there really was nothing to return back to. In this game, I'm not sure what the logic they're trying to play off of here, but the destruction was not total. It was more of just a large-scale disaster, not a complete annihilation of everything in the sector. Although I can't imagine that anybody survived who was on the plate will find that surprising number of people who were beneath it did survive and we're about to go see what that destruction looks like once we uh, once we get through this door up here now oh, here we are A little more. Come on. Come on. It won't budge. Make room. Morrow, you're alive. With me. Ready? Great job, guys. Thank you. I can't tell you how relieved I am to see you. So, what now? Don't know. Find something, anything to do. Then back to the bar yet? No. Maybe you should go take a look? <sighs> okay. First the bar, then the rest. Careful. The roads are a mess. Watch your step or you'll wind up in a hole. Hello! Anybody out there? If you can hear me, say Anybody something! As you can see, there is a lot of destruction. There was a lot of people that were probably killed. But even the amount of destruction that we're looking at here still isn't significant in comparison to what it looked like in the original game. The only thing you really saw of it was the edge, the big door leading between 6 and 7, sectors 6 and 7, and that entire thing was completely covered over with rubble. So, no one survived in the original game. Tifa. It's Wedge's cat. What? Let's follow it. Ready? One, two, three! 
In fact, I can still see some of the ground and look at this. Some of the structures are still intact. Someone had been hiding inside of these houses. Like this one here, they would have been fine. Look at that. I mean, I get they want to have this. They want to have this sort of scene of surveilling the destruction and all of that. But it does kind of make the whole thing feel like it's less significant than it was in the original game. But what do you know? There's something underground. Now, there was earlier on in the game sort of like rumors going around about there being some kind of facility underneath of Sector 7. And, well, we're going to go take a look at that, aren't we? Alright, now we're playing as Barrett. Now, this was another change. You didn't play as Barrett exclusively in any part of the original game. And they've done this with... Oh, they did it with Aerith, and they, I think they did it with Tifa. I'm flagging a little bit on who you've been playing as in the past. But... Oh, look, a bench and a vending machine. How convenient. But yeah, you played as other characters, and... In the original game, you were pretty much exclusively Cloud. There was one part where you were leaving the Shinra building, where you, the party separates into two. And there's another part where, much later on in the game, when Cloud is laid up in a hospital, where you take control of Tifa and then Sid as the main party members. But for the most part, you play as Cloud exclusively throughout this game. And you really only see events from his perspective. Rarely does it, the camera, really pull away from him and see perspective from other characters. Like, it did happen uh, with President Shinra and stuff like that, and with Rufus and all of that, but events were mostly seen from Cloud's perspective. And you sort of wonder, like, what, what happened to these other characters? What happened to them when they were all with Cloud, and this game puts a little more effort into figuring that out. It's like you're shooting at a wall, Barrett. <laughs> He's got the gun instead of the sword, so they use this opportunity to place a bunch of these boxes up higher off the ground so Barrett can shoot them where Cloud wouldn't have been able to. And they put a lot of boxes, and you can destroy a lot of them real fast, but this whole thing like, they do it a little bit too much. Gets a tad tedious. Dude, you could totally fit through there. Jeez. <laughs> you know, it makes sense that... Well, Shinra... Throughout the entire game will show that they've gone and... Spent a lot of time doing these weird experiments with Mako and monsters and all that kind of thing. You've seen it in the Shinra building in the center of the city and you see it in you see it in uh, Nibelheim's Mako reactor and the Sephiroth project and all that kind of crap Genova you know so I guess it makes sense that even underneath of sector 7 you're gonna find some kind of facility where they're going and doing a lot of experiments there so what do you know the rumors were true there is something down here Although, I don't know why it's abandoned. I don't know if the game really gives any... Uh, gives any explanation as to why there's nobody here. I mean, the Shinra Tower is full of people and they're doing experiments there. It doesn't... It doesn't come across like this was a place where there were people. And then they abandoned it and the monsters were just kind of let loose. And maybe that's why they ended up 
going up to Sector 7 and terrorizing the residents, why there always seem to be more monsters no matter how many you killed. Or I guess maybe the people were there the entire time and they were just releasing them to see how effective they were on terrorizing the residents. That'd be a pretty dickish move, but not out of line with something Shinra would end up doing. I mean, they did destroy Sector 7 after all. But it's, you don't, since there are no characters to relay dialogue, you don't really get a perspective on what happened down there. I figure maybe they could have had a monologue of the characters so just sort of speculating as to what happened. But, uh, oh, there it is. Speculating as to what happened, and you could just take that as an excuse or an explanation. Maybe it's possible that the place was abandoned when the plate collapsed to people down there, although the facility seems to be largely intact. All that rumbling from above could have freaked them out and they could have evacuated. Or maybe Shinra, knowing that the plate was going to go down, told everybody to leave. Although, I don't feel like that's something Shinra would do either. They'd probably just like, oh, let him die. <laughs> Bunch of dicks. Wow, that fan does not look safe. Just this big thing with no, like, guard to keep people from stumbling into it. <laughs> I don't really get the perspective. Now, this is totally understandable in video games. Totally understandable why they do this. But the hallways seem to lead nowhere. And... Like, it doesn't make any sense that this is, like, an operating facility for people. People working in there and all that. But these, the layout of this facility doesn't make any sense. For one thing, I don't see any offices or anything like that. I just see hallways that lead nowhere. Like, this hallway leads to a fan that you can only get through if you shoot at it. Where there's a... There's a ladder that leads you down... To another fan that you can only get through if you shoot at it. But I mean, it's totally understandable in video games why that is. Tifa! Hey, Tifa! You okay? To tell you the truth, not really. I think there's a mess around here somewhere. Can you take care of it? I got you. Gotcha. Huh. Sorry. All right, wreck that thing. And it's kind of, um, I guess, an opportunity you could say to have Barrett run into Tifa before it runs in the cloud. Because, you know, as soon as we run in the cloud, your cloud's going to end up taking lead of the party again. And then things are going to sort of revert back to normal. Now, if he runs in the Tifa first, Barrett can be the player character for a little bit longer. And you can have a little bit more interaction um, between cloud, or rather between Barrett and Tifa. Something you don't really see much of at all in the original game. All right. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. All right. Gotta go find Wedge. Come on. In the original game, you had this group of eco terrorists, which were called Avalanche, and they were they they mostly served the story and the story, which takes place from the perspective of Cloud. The way they interact with each other typically has to do with Cloud, like Tifa speaks to Cloud in the original game. I think really for the first time trying to convince him that uh, Tifa speaks to Barrett trying to convince him that Cloud needs to be hired for the second bombing mission. And you don't really have a whole lot of dialogue between these two characters. And in fact, in the original game, there's not a lot of dialogue, generally speaking, between the party members when they're not speaking to Cloud. They don't have a lot of like back and forth communication. 
this the, this game they can't really get away with doing that kind of thing because they're putting more effort into they're putting more effort into fleshing out these other characters so people can't just be talking the cloud so here we are so we're gonna go and we're gonna make Barrett and Tifa meet up with each other before they find Cloud so they can have a little bit more interaction between them. And even in this game, they're, I still feel it's a little bit lacking in terms of like what the relationship between these two characters is supposed to be. Whether it's one of mutual respect or actual friendship or anything like that. But it's definitely more so than what you saw in the original game where the, the characters were... They were both part of Avalanche and that's pretty much the extent of how these characters know each other. In this, they come across like they're friends. Not that they came across like they were uh, antagonistic or at odds with each other in the original game. But in this, they definitely come across like they're uh, more friendly with each other than in the original. Materia. There's so much Materia in this game. Like, I get that they wanted to put the shops in to throw more materia at you or give you the option to buy materia, but honestly, I feel like it's completely unnecessary. Especially since the, the length of the game. I mean, it's a full-length RPG game, even though it's only telling a fraction of the original game's story. It doesn't feel like it's an especially long game in terms of character progression and all that kind of thing. And Materia being a big part of that has a um, unusual effect on it. So I, I definitely mentioned this back in the Train Graveyard episode, but I'll reiterate here because I need something to talk to for the, talk about for the next couple of minutes. But you end up with so much Materia just finding it in places that you never really end up needing to buy it. You just sort of find as much as you need. And the characters really are powerful enough not to need a whole lot of extra materia in order to become powerful. Now they needed the they needed the shops in order to sell it to a person who happens to not find it. But it was totally unnecessary. In fact I don't know if I bought any materia in this game, because everything I really needed, I found. And I also ran into a weird little... <laughs> weird... Weird little mental state while playing through this game, where even though I was aware that the game was probably going to end once the characters left Midgar, I was still thinking about it in terms of the length of the original game, where... Oh, uh, well, I'm not gonna... I'm at the. I'm thinking like, even though I'm fairly late in the game at this point, I'm still feeling like, oh yeah, I'm way in the beginning, way in the beginning. So I don't want to go running around spending money on this or that, or I don't want to go and swap out my materia now because. Hey, you think Wedge is holding up okay? Of course he is. He's a lot tougher than people think. Probably sleeping soundly, dreaming about his cats. You're right. If I swap out my materia now, they won't be gaining the experience points I need later to get the more powerful spells, even though I was well aware that that wasn't the case. And I was also thinking, like, ah, well, I don't want to spend a lot of money, like, doing this and upgrading all that, because I, like, I know this equipment isn't going to be used for that long, and all this other stuff. I was, I was basically thinking, subconsciously anyway, that the game is still so early that I need to play the game almost like I'm still in the beginning as opposed to getting close to the end. <laughs> now Barrett took up that entire bench. <laughs> it does seem kind of weird that your character will, whether it be Barrett or Cloud, will sit down on that bench and the other characters will just stand next to them the entire time. <laughs> Damn it, Tifa, you're like, you're squeezing through that thing like there's no space. Wait. He's okay. You sure? 
Making me worry like that. I'd kick your ass if you didn't look like shit. Thank God. Thank you. Okay, let's go. Not sure. this Beric Now this is interesting, a boss battle of sorts without Cloud in the party. Now that's, it's definitely breaking with the kind of tradition that, like, although the other characters are contributors to the, the party and all that kind of thing, Cloud is definitely supposed to be the hero, and Cloud should largely be present for all the, the big heroic moments. But, you know, split it up a little bit. We gotta do something like that, so here we are. What the hell was that? <laughs> Over the top, I think, but alright. I'll take it. Finding Wedge Alive is another weird one. I mean, I'll get to get to it in a minute, but needless to say, needless to say it was another weird one. I mean, Wedge, Biggs, Wedge, and Jesse all died in the original. It's been a pretty common thing, not just in the Final Fantasy series, but in JRPGs or RPGs or whatever in general, that boss fights have multiple stages. Now, oftentimes, these just sort of resulted in, like, a physical appearance change of the enemy that you're fighting. But in other cases, like in, like, the old Final Fantasy games, where as, like, the boss's tactics would change, or its abilities would change, or something midway through the fight. So then you had to change your own tactics in order to uh, beat it. And that's what's happening here, just in a more elaborate way. to the party and you giving me orders? Well, Cloud didn't exactly save the day there, but he did kind of arrive and contribute in his own way to that fight. Oh god, were those... People? Yeah. 
Yeah. That's the Shinra I know. Cloud? Yeah. 